Let me show you what I have. I've got this Avenki knife. It's actually a Yakut knife, but it's what the Avenki also use. And I don't have a sheath for it, so I want to make one. Um, the Avenki have a special way of making sheaths. Uh, they usually make wooden ones with, and they use tin oftentimes that they find in the forest, you know, from maybe an old can of sardines or something. Uh, and uh, I'd like to show you how to make one, uh, specifically an Avenki uh, knife holster, but due to the shape of the handle on this knife, whereas on a, a forest Avenki knife, your handle's gonna be a fatter than your blade. On this one, it's narrower, so that'll affect somewhat the way the system is designed on an Avenki sheath called an Eniki in Avenki to, uh, to lock into place. So I'm gonna modify, um, you know, I guess I'm gonna go a different route with the with the sheath for this and hope to show you the um, Avenki one a different time. My Yakut knife made by 51 Bravo knives. And then what I'm making is a little wooden frame that this knife will fit inside. So you can see I've carved out a little, this is where the space where the knife's gonna slide in there. Uh, I'll have two of those like this. Sometimes you do these notches down your wood initially so that it doesn't go too deep, so the splits don't go in too deep. They catch these little notches that you make like this. When you then go like this. Nice things about the Yakut knife, you can just lay it flat and and plane along like that. You don't have to get the angle right. So this sat overnight, glued, glued the two sides together. I didn't have clamps, so I just used wire to uh, hold it tight. The nice thing about this is it'll make a really solid. Uh, a connection with the net blade so that you don't lose it and it kind of clicks right into place Dink. so if you're on your reindeer sleigh and you're bouncing down the trail sitting there you won't lose your uh, knife So I got, got this all sanded down. So I got this random piece of tin, aluminum flashing, real flexible. A lot of times I've seen used just a, like a sardine can. Whatever you've got. I'm gonna flatten it out.
one way of making these sheaths. I'm actually doing a modify. I'm, I'm modifying uh, the Avenki wooden sheath with the tin top because again my handle shape doesn't uh, fit the traditional Avenki type sheath style but I'm going to use the, the tin wood combination all the same. So to do that what we're going to do is this way. You can see I've bent the tin and given myself a little extra uh, right here which is where these two these two tail ends will bend over each other uh, and here's where I'm kind of making it up as I go because my this is a different style but I'm gonna actually cut up with the metal here and leave this to pull back down as a loop and create a little loop here off of which I will make my leather belt clip so other than that over here I don't need a loop so I can cut that I'm going to bend over all these outside edges. Yes, yeah, so just bend these edges over so they're not sharp when we're done. All right. So, you get your you get your lock. It's bent in the same direction like so. these two together I think when we lock it bring it together Tighten that on there. So there I got the, the knife wrapped. That'll make sure these two glued pieces never come apart. And it gives me a hang point 
on my sheath here. I just, I mean, to be real honest, I took some uh, different bits of knowledge here and there and just made this up as I went. <laughs> There's what we have. And now I'll show you one other trick to keep the metal securely in place here on your sheath. All right, so now what am I gonna do? Hi. Uh, the screw here, you can get a nail or use your knife. And I'm going to make some marks. I make marks like this. And I'm gonna go all the way around. You can make little designs all the way around up here back there. And why? Because see when you hammer these in and th that kind of staples this metal into the wood on the back side so that this never slides off. Permanently attaches it to the wood. So here we go. Let me do some of that. All right, so finally let me show you how I do my loop, my belt loop. As you can see, the sheath's pretty much done here, aside from getting a red hot piece of metal and making a bunch of little designs around the bottom of the wood here. Definitely gotta do that next time we have a campfire. For my belt loop though, what I got is a strip of leather. We got a hole in the end here, and a hole in the end here, and I'm gonna stick my long piece through the little hole there. And then I'm gonna get my long piece, fold it in half and stick it through itself. And pull it tight. go. Got your little belt loop. Uh, won't come untied unless you untie it. And that's that. Here's my little half of inky, half made up um, wooden sheath. Again, I had to kind of come up with my own design as uh, my knife is different than an Avenki knife. Um, although the the blade's similar, the handle layout's different. Uh, so, well, you got to see some of the techniques they use in an Avenki sheath with the tin. And don't worry, you'll always find tin no matter where you are in the world, in the most remote places in the world, and you'll find tin cans and stuff like that. <laughs> and one of the keys in the forest is to find those things, improvise, and use them uh, any way possible and so this is a way that the Venki have been making sheaths for a long time not only is it uh, safer because it doesn't it's not gonna stab you like leather does but it's actually very light and this is gonna float if you need it to f I mean just to show it's you might look at the metal and be like oh that's heavy but no it's very light dry light wood knife doesn't fall out one of the nice things about that and uh, there you go so go ahead and try to make yourself one sometime Zing. of course don't be afraid to get creative with your designs uh, of your little holes I'm no artist as you can see but you might be